Hello and welcome to the Madhouse everyone and this time around we are doing the 8th edition of the build of the week and unfortunately my throat is a little bit sore so you guys will have to concentrate a little more on my voice this time around and I'm really sorry for that but anyway this um, this particular build has been uh, requested by, by uh, quite a lot of people they wanted me to do a uh, dual wield pistol build or a shotgun build so uh, with the help of uh, my good friend nine tricks we put this one together again it is uh, one of his builds so well that makes it really really good now uh, let's jump into it here we are guys and this is the gunslinger it is uh, a fire strike build it does use dual pistols and uh, well let's uh, just get rid of uh, the soldier tree so that I can explain it it's not really all that much we just put five points into the soldier one point into military conditioning one point fighting spirit I really like this ability but you can actually skip it and we did max Markovian's advantage because it is a really really great skill and it has 25% chance to be used for 170 weapon damage and that is quite a lot okay so uh, Right now we're jumping into the demolitionist tree and in here we have maxed out 50 points into demolitionist. We maxed fire strike, we maxed explosive strike. Uh, we have only 10 points into static strike here, uh, otherwise we would have uh, maxed it but the two points that uh, we did not invest into static strike went one into military conditioning and one into fighting spirit and we have maxed brimstone. Okay, uh, next up, one point flashbang, one point searing light, this is just for CC, a little bit of crowd control, and this ability is really really good, it is spammable, so uh, it will give you a lot of crowd control. Uh, one point vind vindictive flame, really really good for one point. One point canister bomb, and uh, we have maxed concussive bomb, so it does have a 100% chance of stun target for three to six seconds this one is huge right here this is going to be your main uh, cc ability and it will just stun everything for three to six seconds and in that in that time period you can actually just dps everything down and uh, that is pretty much the build it's pretty straightforward uh, you can sort of uh, trick with it a little bit to adjust it um, Another one, the one that Nitrix does use, he went for field command, but I think that right now with the level cap just being uh, 40, it is uh, not really worth going all the way just for one point in field command, but when the level cap is going to be raised, then uh, they, we're going to invest a little heavier into the soldier, getting field command, getting uh, squad tactics and all the goodies there. So uh, right now, let's see the items. Alright, uh, itemization. I went with uh, double outlaws retribution. This is not the best install. This is not absolutely great, but it does the job really, really well. And uh, I think everyone does have at least one outlaws retribution. But uh, if you would have some really, really good high physical uh, one handed pistols, well, pistols are one handed, then uh, you would actually go with these. But the outlaw ret retribution gives us a lot of physical offensive a lot of attack speed and plus two to explosive strike also you have to be careful with that uh, murderous intent five percent chance on attack and it is going to proc quite a bit and uh, it will give you 100 offensive ability but it will give you also minus 50 defensive ability and uh, well that are actually stack so if both of these proc then you would have 200 offensive ability and minus 100 defensive ability so you have to be a little careful there um, I put a severed claw into this one this is uh, an attack speed based skill fire strike so uh, with the completion bonus of 3% attack speed and in here I put a mark of Drieg for the 50 reduced targets resistances for 5 seconds which is really really good and a completion bonus of 7% attack speed Okay, chest, we are using an invigorator gilded vestment of the Drangul and this one is just to sort out our mana problems, so this uh, this particular build does not have any mana problems at all. With a change of Valoran, actually hallowed ground is better in here, but I do not have a hallowed ground with plus one to demolitionist, so I just went with the chains. We have consecrated raider leggings of the Drangul, again really really good, vitality, elemental resist and of the Drangul affix. 
with the traditional ancient armor plate component with uh, a completion bonus of 6% health. The Gunslinger Talisman enables us to dual wield pistols, so it is a must. If you don't have this, uh, then you cannot do this build, this particular build, although you could get um, an offhand instead of uh, the second pistol. Next up, we have the Utility Belt. This is not really needed uh, to this particular build. You can have uh, just a, a, a better green belt with a dense fur for some cold resistance and a completion bonus of 17 offensive ability. This uh, character, I focused him on offense and defense, so that is what uh, I went for with uh, the Drangul affixes, and also the Outlaw's Retribution does uh, contribute quite a bit to our offensive ability. We have Cutthroat's Badge of the Drangul. Uh, again, nothing really, really special, just a really, really good medal with a vicious jawbone in it, a completion bonus of 7% uh, elemental resist, insulating spiked greaves of the Drangul, uh, with a mark of Mogdragon in there, completion bonus 6% health, chainmail gloves of the Drangul, uh, this is again lacking one affix, and same here, This the shoulder is lacking one affix, but I cannot craft uh, some... Uh, some hands and shoulders with uh, two affixes and one of them being triangle for some reason the game just hates me and i put a unholy inscription in there some resist scanning and a completion bonus of six percent health in here the component is mutated scales for more more health but you can do silk watch for a little bit more bleeding uh, well piercing and bleeding resistances and the rings are General Scupper Band of the Serpent, two of them, really really good rings. I put Roiling Blood in there for more physical damage and uh, mainly offensive ability. Completion bonus here, 11% Ether Resist and in here, 11% Chaos Resist. And uh, the amulet is General Skull Fetish of the Eagle. Some, uh, some attributes there, offensive, defensive, 14% total damage with a Dread Skull in there, a completion bonus of 4% cunning, completion bonus can actually be a little bit better here. And uh, the head is resistant Brigandine Mask of the Drangul, elemental damage, offensive, defensive, and just goodies there, fire resistance, poison and acid resistance with a runestone in it with a completion bonus of 62 health and uh, well that is pretty much the itemization for this character it is pretty straightforward I know most of you do not have uh, all this uh, drangle here I have one two three four five six seven items with uh, of the drangle affix and uh, well if we are on uh, itemization uh, for weapons you can actually go Hallowed Fang uh, for the leech, 10% of attack damage converted to health and uh, you can actually bypass this by using blood letter of the Drangul so that is going to give you the leech from the items but I do not have uh, blood letters and I also did not go with Hallowed Fang but most probably if you if you are playing on hardcore then I would definitely suggest uh, going with Hallowed Fang or the blood letters to have some leech but still right now it does it for me and uh, well that is pretty much it concerning uh, the technicalities of uh, of this build um, quite gear dependent I would say quite a bit gear dependent and uh, we have offensive ability at 1.4k on the attribute side I went uh, a little bit crazy on the cunning you would want typically a little bit more physique and I got just enough spirit to use that invigorating gilded vestment of the Drangul and uh, as I said, it is uh, quite a gear dependent character, but uh, you guys are going to see it in action right now, so uh, I think I think it's worth it. Uh, I think it's a really good build and uh, quite fun to play. So let's jump into uh, some gameplay. We're going to do Steps of Torment right now. Okay, so here we are in Steps of Torment. Um, I think we're just going to do a normal run. Stop a little bit to kill stuff. It is quite this build is quite fun, so I do not mind killing stuff. Uh, you guys can see we got uh, quite a few crits. We will be getting a lot of crits. 
I think uh, the, the biggest one that we got was uh, 10k and uh, we will be focusing on uh, using that canister bomb on um, on big, big big groups of monsters sorry for the dog by the way okay uh, let's just go to the second level in here kill that always lovely to kill big packs uh, you would think that this is just uh, a single target build but it does really really good ooh that was bad uh, it does really really good uh, AoE damage as well it is uh, an all round really powerful ranged build and uh, as I said before ranged builds except um, except the knives in uh, in the plate master tree are not really the thing right now so uh, let's go to the second level really sorry about the voice I am doing my best uh, kill that monstrosity really really quick and let's see the layout here we will have to go through the middle so far no real issues I do not expect the I don't expect to be any issues to be totally honest with you only the last level might prove a little bit overwhelming while it does do good AoE damage uh, if there are like a lot of mobs and uh, you cannot CC them all with uh, with the canister bomb I'm yeah okay so if you cannot CC them all with a canister bomb then uh, it might be a little bit of an issue but nothing crazy as you can see the the range of the thing is really really huge and it does such a good job at stunning everything okay uh, let's let's move forward in here no need to kill all this stuff okay we are getting into misery right now after we kill these so you guys must have got uh, a little bit of uh, a feel of how this build works and uh, as I said overall is it's really powerful and, uh, and very very stable damage it's not like oh it th did not proc or anything no it's it's very stable damage it's a really good and fun build to play and that was almost a, ta a 10k crit there I do not like being frozen. These frost revenants suck. That was the first potion we had to use. And uh, this is not... Uh, I did not go for survivability. As I mentioned earlier, if, uh, if you do want to be a little bit tankier, if you do want to play it a little bit safer, then uh, just, just put a hollowed fang in, uh, in one of your weapons, maybe even two or get some leech leech items okay so we are mm, getting near the first boss at the bomb there and uh, you guys will be able to see the single target damage the pure single target damage that, uh, that this build is capable of uh, we could use a little bit more attack speed to be totally honest with you guys uh, you would want a little bit more attack speed than uh, than what I have get the bomb there and that's how you do it so as you saw really fast really easy no, no real issues we use the canister bomb to stun everything while we just DPS to the boss down and going to open up the gates so that we can get to the second part of uh, Steps of Torment okay here we go into the second part of Steps of Torment and I'm going to skip that big guy there and go straight into the next level and this is Suffering we're going to have uh, the death room in here right around the corner and that is not going to pose uh, any issues we will have to target down the big guys as usual and uh, the fact that this character is ranged it is going to be a little bit uh, more difficult to get to the big guys than uh, 
than on another character but it is not going to be any issue okay here we are the first wave get off this guy first there it goes let's pop that Rather there's restore gauntlets not bad let's put the canister bomb in the middle take care of this guy as you saw reflect quite hurts so be prepared to use a potion uh, if you see reflect get on the canister bomb down there target on the big guy there it goes down and let's see let's do the death revenant first that is pretty much it and this was the death room no no real issues still got another elite here there it goes so as you saw no no trouble doing the death room and uh, let's go kill Ilgo up top right now and then head into the last level of Steps of Torment so the fact that this, uh, this character has a lot of CC sort of enables you to go a little light on, uh, on defensive but you still have to pay, uh, to pay attention to what you're doing especially in steps otherwise uh, there's no real issue I do not uh, think there is something that can just surprise you so much that you end up dead if you are paying a little bit amount of attention so that was is blocked there we will have to go around here to the left side and this is quite quite a long way not a nice pattern at all but we'll deal with it it's uh as you saw that was a really really good canister bomb there everything got stunned for a really long time let's uh go through here and up top reflective miss the bomb there and it's down Let's get that. I do think I have Rampage. I would be disappointed if I... Okay, I do have it. It's still worth checking, to be honest. I don't know if I do have all the blueprints in the game, but most probably that is true. Uh, Swift. Other champion dead. And uh, right now we are getting close to Ilgor. Come on, come on, come on. So we're going to do... It'll go the immortal up top and then head into the last level. Quite a little bit of density here, so we will have to stop and kill. A lot of elites, whoa. Okay. Bloody priests that kept uh, healing that guy. Uh, here we are. It'll go the eternal, not immortal. There he is down. But he came right back up. Okay. He's slowing my attack speed. Alright. Uh, well, that was that. So that way is blocked. So we will have to go uh, back this way through the right side. And go into anguish. Okay, uh, let's see the layout here. Uh, what is going to be the vendor? We will have to go through the middle, I think. Yeah, most probably. Uh, this is this can be dangerous, by the way. In uh, in anguish, there are a lot of uh, a lot of monsters. Plenty of density here. Oh, the vendor is down there. Okay, this is indeed a weird layout. So we will have to go through the middle and then come all the way back there. Oops, that was bad. So that can happen. You guys know how uh, the projectiles work in Grim Dawn. They can uh, collide midair and explode. So uh, 
one of these mobs was shooting at me and I tried to do my canister bomb and it actually hit the bomb and exploded right right near me to no real effect so you should uh, you should keep that in mind okay as you can see everything is stunned no real issues this is why canister bomb is uh, really really good although it does have uh, a moderate cooldown I would say Okay, um, let's go all the way back down. Yeah, damn it. Okay, a lot of density here as usual. Everything is done. Okay, let's keep going. No, you cannot go through there. That is a heroic chest, so uh, let's see how we do against uh, a surprise wave. Okay, I did not want to pop my potion there. Come on. Why? Why did nothing come out of the ground? That is unusual. Usually something really big and nasty would come out of the ground if you pop that heroic chest. Okay, let's take care of these guys and see if the door no door is unlocked. Oh, good. So let's go to the vendor and then come back for the boss. Right, lot of density in this room. Go canister bomb. Go, go. Yes, good. Lovely. Okay, let's go through here. And we made it to the vendor. No, no, no. Damn it. Let's hope that does not lock. That would be ridiculous. Uh, bindings and inferno. Okay, now let's uh, go and kill the last boss. So that uh, this Steps of Torment run is going to be complete. Let's see what uh, awaits us at the door here. I see some nasty stuff. Some nasty stuff indeed. This is uh, one of the most, if not the most dangerous parts of the game right now. If you get two, two monstrosities here, one of them elite. There we go, we got the first one. And we got the second one as well. So all good, let's go and take care of the boss in here. Uh, he does quite a little bit of damage, so you will have to kite him a little bit, as you can see here unlike uh, other builds maybe with uh, with leech you you will be able to just stand there and tank him but since I do not have leech and I just uh, kited him around just a little bit and uh, well this has been uh, steps of torment really straightforward really easy and uh, we are going to go into the herald of flame alright guys last uh, Gameplay of this build of the week is going to be the Herald of Flame just as usual and uh, we are going to go with this gunslinger to execute the good Herald. Okay, uh, there's not going to be any real issues right here. Uh, just a little bit crystal as usual, that goes for, for all characters. But uh, since this uh, this guy is ranged then we actually have an advantage with, uh, with a big crystal formation. Okay, uh, we are going to get there right now. This is actually one of uh, one of the easiest parts to clear for this character. As you can see, we can just kill the other formation from uh, from a distance, so that it does not do all that much damage to us. 
And right now everything is going to be really straightforward. So this is um this is one of the strongest characters overall. To be totally honest, we got no energy problems. You can uh, you can fix the survivability issue with uh, with a leech, and uh, well, honestly, it does have quite a little bit of potential for when the level cap is going to be raised, and we will be able to go a little bit deeper into the soldier tree, and to get Aurora's more uh, more offensive ability, more defensive ability. So uh, yeah, it's it's going to be one of I think one of the best characters. And it's only going to get better with um, with the level caps being raised. Okay, take care of that. It is a little bit harder to target down reanimators, but uh, well, we just got so much damage that uh, it's not really needed. And uh, it's not really about the damage with this character. It's about the CC because. CC really does uh, does wonders. Everything is stunned. You just you just kill stuff while they're stunned. They pose no real issue. Okay, uh, let's go down here and see who's winning. Let's see who's winning here. Uh, quite equal this time around. But honestly, it does really appear that most of the time the ethereals have uh, have the advantage. It's just not that many thonics around here. Okay, uh, we're getting close to the little house. And uh, we will have to be a little bit uh, more careful there because these guys do reflect quite a little bit of damage and I cannot see what's in there. But the canister bomb is here to save the day. Okay. Right, and here we are at the Herald of Flame itself. Take care of these pesky little mobs. Let's throw the cast up on there. And that was the herald. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed this 8th uh, edition of the build of the week. Make sure to check Nitrox's stream. It is in the description. He's the guy that uh, made most of these builds, most of these incredible builds, and all the credit goes to him. And uh, well, if you guys got any suggestions, and if you would like to see any particular build in the next edition of the build of the week, then please comment or send me a private message on the forums. I'm Tridor, I hope you guys enjoy this, and I shall see you all next time.